day where, well, ordinarily you'd be perhaps getting up really early, of course, to listen to Times Radio whilst preparing to get to your favourite shops before they open and the queues to get into those stores, the drive to bag a bargain, historically what Boxing Day sales are all about, but not this year, of course, with many non-essential shops closed in tier four areas, many of the Boxing Day sales expected to, well, move online. And joining me now is retail analyst Kate Hardcastle to talk about whether or not you can still grab that bargain. Kate, welcome to the programme. Merry Christmas. Uh, thank you. Good morning. So how can people, Kate, do their Boxing Day shopping this year? How is it different? Well, I think we've got to understand the driver behind sale shopping. A lot of us have moved to uh, online this year. We've seen significant growth, particularly down to the fact that we've had the lockdowns and the closure of non-essential retail stores. And we've seen probably the shift we're expecting to see by about 2025 in this gradual move and transition to using online much more as a frequent uh, way to purchase. Uh, it, it's been completely accelerated by the COVID situation. And so we've got a, a really new dynamic coming through in retail, uh, very much one where the shopper is in control of their buying behaviour. They understand a lot more about discounting patterning and they're just working with all the tools available them, to them to get the best deal. And I think as they've gone through that process this year, but certainly building up over the last 10 years, they've become quite savvy to the fact that retailers have different products on offer at different times of year. And just because there is a big Black Friday sale banner or a big Boxing Day, Day banner, it doesn't always mean you're getting the best deal. Um, and I think we're going to see this change in our buying habits in so many ways, but particularly in this sale patterning. I just don't think it's going to be the precious time it once was in terms of the retail calendar where you were selling at full price for three months before that. And then on Boxing Day, you would literally mark down your whole store and that would be it. Everything would be uh, for sale at half price or, or more. And then you would um, start again the, the calendar in January. So what should we be looking for if you're searching for a bargain online today? Well, I'm going to sound like your mum now. I'm just going to say, <laughs> unless you really need it, unless you've got the money for it, then you shouldn't be looking for anything anyway. Um, many of us have reconnected with our homes in a big way this year. We've gone through our wardrobes. We know there's been such a hit on fashion, um, particularly because of things like the the fact we've just not been going anywhere, basically. But we've re gone through our wardrobes, changed everything, realised we've got things to wear. Um, so we're changing massively in terms of what we're consuming. And many of us are wanting to certainly buy into experiences and vouchers and things that we can look forward to as we try and reconnect with people in, in what might hopefully be better times in 2021. But if you are absolutely destined to bring yourself a little bit of happiness through shopping today, I would say stick to things that look genuinely a real deal. And you can find that out so easily now because there are these comparison websites where you can check the price of something and watch how it's been reduced over the course of the year. See if it's genuinely a bargain right now. We do know there are some out there because definitely some retailers have to clear stock and if you were going to buy something that's going to be perhaps fashion it's the staples of the wardrobe it's maybe some cashmere jumpers or jeans or white shirts things that are going to last you forever because as you know when you're buying online it can be a very different experience and, and what looks like a nice pattern in a photograph might not be quite the same expectation when something arrives at your door. We were having a conversation before coming on air this morning, Kate, in the team uh, about how people have been doing Christmas this year. And actually, one of the team echoed something I've heard a number of times, that rather than buying Christmas presents uh, for Christmas Day this year, uh, he has held off and is planning on buying during the Boxing Day sales and has told family and friends, you know, you'll have to hang on. I think lots of people are doing that this year. How much do you predict that there will be a sudden surge and up? rise in, in people spending money online from today onwards, actually buying Christmas gifts? Well, there's a couple of th interesting things there. Um, first and foremost, last year, we did a lot of that too. So I think many of us had a grown up conversation last year and said, actually, is it okay if we put off this or they give maybe money to uh, adult children and said, look, you know, just pass hold on to the to the cash until the sales really hit in. Um, because the thing is, when you teach a consumer that you're doing 20%, 30%, 40% discounting, they know what's coming next. So absolutely, if you've been hanging on for that uh, bargain, then it's the time to buy. But what made this year really interesting is we had an unusual spike very early on. Uh, before the, the discounting really hit. And a lot of people were trying to buy things up 
under the warning that they might not get the delivery slots that they were hoping to get, to get presents sent to people they weren't going to see in advance. So I think we're going to have a really unusual peak and trough this year when we look at the analytics, where we've maybe bought quite a, a lot of items up front, maybe not at the discounting that we got last year, because we wanted to make sure they were with the recipient of the gift at, at, on a time in a timely manner. And then we're probably going to have this peak towards uh, Boxing Day and beyond where people say, actually, I don't really need to buy anything because I'm not celebrating Christmas in the way that I wanted to. So I'm going to get more presents for you. Let's hope that they're going to buy more presents <laughs> rather than spend less fingers um, crossed. in the Boxing Day sales. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed if you're on the receiving end of that, I suppose. Uh, the thing is, Kate, and you've been speaking about this for, for quite some time now, that the high street is changing and, and part of that was inevitable and, and part of that had nothing to do with the pandemic. But as you say, the pandemic has really accelerated uh, how our high streets are transforming. This has huge ramifications for jobs jobs, for city centres, for, for so many other parts of the economy. It's huge. We need to be still, we're very human. And if you go back to our most primal instincts, you know, we have a need to be together. We have a need to uh, to find community, to find place. But our places had become places purely around the retail hospitality offer. And I think both of those industries are really important to us in the UK. We are a service-led country. Um, so we want to see the rejuvenation of retail and hospitality. But we can't just hang our hat on that. And what I feel perhaps the consumers, us as, as, as community members, have maybe had disservice over the years is when we've rebuilt these high streets, it tends to have been the new version of retail and then the new version of retail we heard a lot about experience shopping so then we saw this almost huge uh, arrival of many more nail bars and hairdressers all again very important and have their place but you can't just hang your hat on one solution what we need are places to be and that has to be places to live work shop entertain everything all together working harmoniously and hopefully with the right balance of all businesses great and small in there that bring vibrancy to our high streets i don't want to get off a train and not know which town or city i'm in because it all looks the same with the same brands there i want to feel the value of place so i i know it's hard to see when we hear about a quarter of a million potential job losses from the traditional bricks and mortar stores this year yes obviously Raya, you know we've got this huge boost online so there's different jobs in retail in different places but that's still a hard number to hear and we see these closed stores and these boarded up stores it doesn't feel like we're in the best of places but out of pandemics is born change is born creativity and i really hope that we will start to get the places to be that we all deserve there was a time when uh, you'd walk down any high street and you'd see the likes of of debenhams you'd see house of fraser you'd see uh, top shop on every high street and that was the norm mm. who would have thought in the year 2020 that that we would be seeing the demise of these sorts of well stalwarts of the of the high street where did they go wrong i think many things happened in different businesses if we look right back from the days of woolworths onwards when i started commenting on uh, what was happening in retail some of it is that they just weren't invested in. Some of it was that they were uh, maybe run by people that thought retail of old would always carry on. The whole mantra of stack it high, sell it cheap. Um, and the, the idea that you could trade yourself out of any problems that happened in retail. You know, you could just heavily discount and if things went wrong until you got enough people through the door. It's so much more sophisticated now. We have given people, the consumer, the knowledge through their smartphones. They want to engage with retail and business in very different ways. That can be quite difficult for businesses to get their head around, to think that the consumer's got a level playing field, to think that you can actually have to serve them and build relationships with them. But I can absolutely assure you that there is a plethora of brands out there doing it, and they're doing it brilliantly. They're building authentic and respectful relationships with the consumer, and not to get too heavyweight for a boxing day uh, but I think if you understand as a business that actually most consumers understand you make a profit they're okay with that as long as you do it with a great set of values I think that's going to be the new breed of business the new era of business that we we're about to enter some already are in there I'm excited about it I think for me after 20 odd years of doing this it's probably going to be the biggest wave of change and the most welcome wave of change this balance of ethical ecological authentic shopping all together where we all start doing a bit of a better job um 
but that's speaking from a woman that's probably seen uh, too many uh, manufacturing units all over the world making a lot of stuff that perhaps I've thought now and again we maybe don't need all this stuff so you know it's I love shopping I love everything it can do for us I love it as an industry um, but if we do it in a better way because we've learned I think that's a good outcome. So a sustainable future for the high street. Kate, really, really good to speak to you. Absolutely. Kate Hardcastle, uh, retail analyst, joining us to pull through the, well, what the Boxing Day sales mean for you this year.